Hey, it's syndicated radio talk show host, author, singer, Al Cole, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. I come from CBS Radio. My shows are nationally syndicated, and I've helped pave the way to treating women, guys too, with the dignity that they deserve, and I do that through my shows and through Apple, very dignified radio network, Apple's iTunes radio network under their professional news talk division, airing CBS shows, Fox News, NPR, BBC, C-SPAN 2, everything. It's the best talk in the country around the world, Apple's iTunes radio network, and I want you to visit my website, peopleofdistinction.org. A lot to see there, a lot to hear as well, my Apple streams. You can see my national alliances with people like Ariana Huffington, the founder of the Huffington Post. And you can also read up on my major media consulting. Yeah, I've helped uh, hundreds of people to become entrepreneurial at what they're promoting through media, especially through interviewing, core messaging, and all of that stuff. And if you like it, I want you to email me at alcoholic at gmail.com. You heard me right. That's A-L-C-O-L-E-H-O-L-I-C at gmail.com. Hey, and I love that. You know, it came from my CBS uh, listener base. It seemed like from day one, my CBS radio listeners have been saying, Al, we love what you're doing there, brother. In fact, we're hooked on it. We're Al Cole Hollicks. <laughs> hey. And coming from CBS Radio, I'm also a New York Times bestselling author with Chicken Soup for the Soul. Chicken Soup for the Soul is distributed by CBS's Simon & Schuster. So we keep it in the family that way. Coming up, a family kind of guy. His name is Dave Davies. Oh, you've got to love that right from the start. Get this title, people. you never heard a title like this before. Quatemoc. Quatemoc. This is a different sort of book. Quatemoc has to do with a real live human being. That was his name. And Quatema came into this book from birth many centuries ago in South America. And one of the big themes of this book, Quatema, is that we shouldn't limit ourselves. Eh, boy, we can fly like an eagle. <laughs> in fact, it's a series of books. And one of them is Quatema, Descending Eagle. Yeah. And we like ascending as well into sometimes the unknown that now we know when we don't limit ourselves. You get it, people? You know, it's a riddle sort of book. And Dave's going to solve all the riddles right now when we bring him in. And you can help to solve some riddles, too. Order this book at Amazon.com. Great book here, Quatemoc, <laughs> Descending Eagle. And you're hearing it here first on People of Distinction. And I got to you know, really compliment the uh, company that brought Dave to my show. And that's You Are Link, one of the best in the publishing world. If you got a book that you got to move, well, they're your movers. Go to uh, youarelinkpublishing.com. I'm going to welcome also my son, Benji, who is going to be do the, doing the co hosting. Benji is really great. I'm so very proud of this young man. He's uh, in Los Angeles. He's a filmmaker as well as an actor. Been on stage with Tom Hanks, other notables, and uh, this this guy really knows how to interview as well. I'm going to introduce Benji, and then we're both going to introduce Dave. Benji, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Al. How are you doing? Doing very well, and uh, now we're going to introduce Dave, and Benji's going to take it over from this point with the interview of Dave. Dave Davies, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. We can talk about your book, Quatemoc, that we're going to be okay. talking about in really stellar ways. Just say the essential okay. things, the things that you think listeners, national listeners will be interested in. If I drift Amazon. too far off to one side or another, just tell him to bring me back into line. Benji C. and Fossa. Yep. See, he'll he'll bring you back yep. into line. Me, I'm a little bit too polite, but Benji will know how to bring you back into line. Benji, take it from here, boy. <laughs> Dave Davies, again, thank you very much for being with us on the line. Uh, we're very excited to kind of jump right into this. Now, let's just start off. I mean, the title of the book is, is amazing right off the bat, right? So, Quatemoc. Descending Eagle. Let's just start with what a gripping title that is. Quatemoc, does that translate into anything? Or what was the inspiration for that title, Dave? 
it means descending eagle. The word Kotamak is Aztec, and it means descending eagle. So I actually said descending eagle, descending eagle in two different languages. There you go. Fantastic. Good to know that. And the inspiration behind the story, I remember in the pre-screening call we were discussing, there was a gentleman that you met by the name of Kotamak. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, he's from South America. The boy's from South America. I met him in a store. And his name tag says Kotamak on it. And that's, that's a bizarre word, C-U-A-U-H-T-E-M-O-C. And this is obviously not American. And I poke him in the name tag and I said, how do you say that? And he tells me. And, of course, my mouth isn't interested at all in saying that word. And I stumble around, and he tells me about Quartelma. And Quartelma, uh, in real life, was the, was the last Aztec emperor. And uh, he was the one that Cortez burned his feet off and tortured him to death. Uh, very brutal times. A lot of negative things happened in that time. And among the things that happened is that entire South America, which was actually descending uh, the, uh, the Inca, the Mayan, and the Aztec were all um, a thousand plus year old, and they were in the nadir. They were going down, and it actually brought about the descent of the Spanish and rest, and um, it brought about a third world countries in all over Europe and through South America. And after Guatemala, my friend explained to me what actually happened in history. I, I was on that like a chicken on a dune bug. And what if uh, somebody got up and said they didn't find him because they thought he were gods? The, the Mayan calendar stated that gods, quote unquote, were coming from the east in big boats and they have hairy faces, which described the people that were coming in. And you can't fight gods. And um, so the people just, whatever, if they want to take your money, you give them your money. If they want to take your wives, you give them your wife. They want to kill you, well, you're going to die. You know, that was their mindset. And I thought, what if one person, just one person got up and said, these are not gods. I know they're not gods because they can be killed. I know they can be killed because I killed them. And you want to see me do it again, watch, and I'll do it again. And he does. And the story takes off from that. And what I wanted to do was to create an alternate reality wherein the Spain and, and Portuguese and the rest of them never become third world countries. And Spain and, and South America never becomes a, world, uh, a, a third world country. In fact, they become... Um, the United States at their time, they become a world power in the end of the books. All right. And you said books because there is four series to this. Is that correct? Correct. When I first started this out, I was going to write a book on it, but so many possibilities came into my mind. Among them, uh, this is a scientific fact that flight as, uh, as, as human flight was actually possible hundreds of years before Wilbert and Orville Wright ever flew. The only thing they did is they put a motor on it. Um, the, 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 what we would call hang gliders today. And so I created hang gliders back at that time in, in the first book. And there had to be a reason for them. They wouldn't do it just for fun because that's not how they, they didn't have that kind of mindset or time. And so I created the whole idea of a postal system based on hey, on Birdman. And um, that's where that concept came from. And the more things that I wrote into the book, the more things my brain discovered to stick into it. That's why it wound up with four books. Absolutely. So just to kind of brief in our listeners here again, we're on the line with Dave Davies, Quatemoc Descending Eagles, which is also available on Amazon. You guys can easily find that online. Dave, really quickly, uh, the book sounds fascinating. I mean, we're, we're kind of going down all these different roads, and my mind is just is, is going everywhere. This, my imagination is taking off here, and it is a fiction, which I personally love, you know, fictional stories that way. So when you met Quatemoc, what was the inspiration on wanting to 
construct this story? I mean, what about him set you off uh, on this path? Two things. Number one, uh, I have that kind of mind. This is just something that what I am. I've, I, I've started writing stories before, never got anywhere with them. And uh, when I met him, what he told me, what happened, uh, somehow just set my brain on fire. Uh, all of the things that had happened in reality, um, just as an, a brief aside, the Spaniards and Portuguese and whatever took so much gold that they stole from Central America or South America and brought back to their own countries that nobody wanted to work because everybody was millionaires. And so they hired out uh, in different Serrani countries, Germany and Portugal or, or in, and, and Poland and, and around to come into their country and work for them. And ultimately all the gold that they had stolen from South America went into the surrounding countries and it turned Spain and uh, uh, Portugal into a third world country, which they still are. And uh, talking to my friend, Quatuma, I got to think of what would happen if it didn't work out that way, if they didn't think they were gods, if somebody got up and said, no, these people aren't gods, but maybe we can make friends with them. Maybe we can trade and have commerce. And it actually worked out better in my version. Uh, by the end of the book, the, the South America is a world power, and Spain and Portugal and all the rest of them are not third world countries. And just to hear you talk, Dave, about this idea of questioning whether or not these individuals are gods, right, and kind of defying that, that seems like a pretty rebel point of, of view, you know, definitely not the standard perspective uh, that that is to take. So Quatemoc sounds like a bit of a revolutionary in that sense to question those views. Is that correct? Uh, he starts off just as a normal kid. Uh, I tried to make everything in the storyline logical uh, to make sense. I tried not to bring anything out of uh, the thin air just because I could. I wanted it to make sense and to be logical. And uh, there's a lot of things that I put into the book that I, when I first wrote the very first lines, I didn't see coming. It was things that was a work in progress. And, it ultimately took me almost 10 years to finish the story up to do the last the, the part of the fourth book. Wow. But, uh, and wow. I, I like the way it turned out. I, I, I like his character. And just as an aside, the book, the first paragraph, first sentence of the first paragraph on the first book is with his birth. And the last paragraph and the last sentence of the last book deals with his death, but even then, the reader's not sure if he's dead or not because of, the, of what happens just before that. And uh, I like to create as many questions as I do answers. It's just the way my brain works. I can't help it. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I love it. You know, you want to you want to create that suspense that way. So there you have it, guys. Quatemoc, Descending Eagles, spans over a series of, of four books. Uh, and it follows this gentleman throughout his life from birth until death, again, available on Amazon. And really quickly, Dave, before we uh, before we end here, is there one thing that you would just love to kind of lead us out on, one thing that our listeners have to know to really kind of embark on this journey with you? If there's one thing they can take away from this interview, what would you say that is? I'm not sure I quite understood what you were saying. Can you rephrase that slightly? One, if there's one thing that, that you really want our listeners to take away from this interview to kind of really sell this book. Again, obviously, there's a lot of different things that we have going on here, and it sounds amazing. But if there's one thing you really want the listeners to know about this, uh, about this book, what would you say that is? I'm not real sure. I, I basically fell in love with the concept uh, my my thought is that we humans are far more limited than we need to be, and that we have abilities that we don't even begin to touch, and that Quatomic, through one way and another, does 
get into these things. And I tried to put everything in the four books, that first book, you know, and the rest of them, to be logical and to make sense. Also to be entertaining and to make people laugh and make people think. That's what I hope to do. There you have it. Dave, again, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. One more time, guys. Quatemoc, Descending Eagles, available on Amazon. Dave, thank you very much for being with us on People of Distinction. We truly appreciate you sharing your time with us. Uh, and we're definitely hoping that this uh, this helps sell some more books. Sounds like a fantastic series. I hope so, too. God bless you. And I thank you for, for having me on your show. Yeah, and you know, Dave, I'm going to make a reflection, too, on uh, some of the things that you were talking about, especially at the end. I really like it, where you uh, you said, and I'm, this is not verbatim, I'm uh, putting this out to my listeners, uh, what Dave was talking about is we shouldn't limit ourselves. We are limitless human beings, and what that means is that human beings can transfer themselves and translate uh, their mindsets and their feelings not only to other human beings, certainly that way. We know about marriage. We know about having children. We know about having friends, all of this stuff. You know, our mindset becomes other people's mindsets, and we're influenced by other people that way as well. But no, we can, in, we can influence nature. We can influence uh, animals. We can influence maybe other planetary beings, and we're probably doing that as we speak. We can maybe even influence that great eagle in the sky, that ascending eagle, you know, the descending eagle that uh, Dave was talking about, Quetemoc, in his book. Well, there's also an equal and opposite force, and that's the ascending eagle. Who is that, Al? Whoa, what do you mean by that? Well, maybe God we're talking about. And maybe human beings have not only the ability, but the right to influence God itself, that beautiful master energy in the sky that actually created us all through love, that love experience. That is the major thing. And see, Dave has that too. Dave is a lover of life, an exploration of life. And we love that too on People of Distinction. And I really think that this was a fascinating, wonderful interview because Dave is an honest guy and he's talking from his heart, he's talking from his soul. He's talking about the things that he really does love and value. And if we do that as human beings, if we really concentrate on doing that, whoa, now we have better human beings in this world. We have more intelligent and educated human beings. And we have a greater amount of understanding of each other and acceptance of each other. That's what people of distinction is about. When we start to accept other people for who they are and the genius that they really do have... We respect them more, and we respect more, whoa, we have a better world. And that's a lot of what Dave was talking about, too, and I love that on People of Distinction. And so, Dave, thank you for being our special guest here today, mine and uh, also my son Benji's special guest on People of Distinction, and uh, we wish the best for you in all of your directions throughout life. Thank you so much, Dave. And thank you, sir. So how did you like uh, Benji's interview of you? I liked it quite well. <laughs> uh, I have very little um, experience with such things, but uh, I liked the way it was going. Uh, if I was going to add anything to it, I believe that we limit ourselves far more than we are limited by other things, by mm -hmm. other people or even circumstances. Yeah. And that if we... Uh, We'll just try and, and give it an honest chance. We'll do far better than we think we can. Oh, absolutely. And that's exactly why I capped off the show to my listeners the way I did, too. Because, hey, you know, a big part of your book, Guatemoc, is about that. Let's not limit ourselves, people. What seems to be impossible in our present, boy, when we travel into our future, we can grab it. And... It's the everyday modus operandi of our society at that point. Quatemoc, that's one of the big essences of your book. 